all these things. And then a fourth, a fourth angel, verse 12, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is another instance of God protecting his child. A fifth angel, verse 13, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Uh, get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And so again, God is protecting his child. Verse 14, so they got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Notice the text has ch changed from Mary and Joseph, Joseph and Mary, and the child <coughs> to the child and his mother. The child is now the most significant uh, player in, in, the, in, this, in this text. Verse 15, where they stayed until the death of Herod. Herod died 4 BC. Uh, how long they stayed, we do not know. Uh, and it says, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Now, uh, this, is a, this is a third prophecy, okay? Hosea 11, verse 1 is the prophet that's being quoted. And the prophet uh, says, out of Egypt I call my son. Now, the prophecy in Hosea refers to Israel. Israel in the Old Testament was referred to as God's son. He, Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. Jesus is God's firstborn son. Jesus is God's one and only son. Uh, Israel, as God's son, was not faithful. Jesus, as God's son, was faithful and did everything that God expected him to do. And so Jesus is the, the son of God that God called out of Egypt here. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he learned from the Magi. Uh, probably not that many children. Bethlehem was a village of a few hundred people. Uh, there probably weren't that many um, little boys two years or, or under. So we don't have a figure, but it wasn't a massacre in the sense of, of thousands of, of babies. And then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. And so we have the fourth prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15 uh, is the prophecy. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and uh, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. In other words, these children have been killed. And then we have a sixth angel. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. And then the final angel, the seventh. But when they heard that Ar Ar Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, having been warned in a dream. We assume an angel did that. He withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. And then we have the final prophecy. So was fulfilled what was said uh, through the prophets. He would be called a Nazarene. Now, if you look through your Bible, you will never find a passage that is a prophet saying he will be called a Nazarene. This is a term of derision. Uh, probably uh, during Jesus' time especially, uh, Naz Nazareth was a little dinky town and people didn't think much of it. The best example I think we have is John 1 verse 46, uh, where it says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, and so that kind of gives you an idea, but the idea that the Messiah would be uh, would be uh, talked about and scorned uh, is, is prophecy, and so maybe it refers to several prophecies. So Joseph and Mary went back to Nazareth, and that's where Jesus was raised. And so the lesson is yours. Uh, if you need to respond, would you come while we stand?